Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. So, uh, full disclosure, I just woke up probably about 15 minutes ago. Uh, it is the morning of Thursday the 27th, which should be the same day this video is going out. And I just saw that there was a new Master Duel ban list. So, uh, I have not fully read it yet. I did look at, at one, I saw one quick thing. Um... And kind of lack of things as a result. But anyway, um, we're going to read the ban list in full here together. It's up here in the notifications tab. Uh, I'm a little surprised that it came out this soon um, after the Duelist Cup. I feel like usually they take a little bit more time with it. But at the same time, we are at about that moment in the season. So, all right, let's go ahead and check it out here. Upcoming Forbidden Limited List Update. Expected implementation uh, July 10th, 2024. Okay, that's probably about the same, same time we can expect the new selection pack as well. Um, lately, it seems like those release dates have been coinciding, and this is, again, about the point in time in which the pack will probably come out, uh, because it usually comes out about a week to a week and a half into the, uh, the, the new month there. So, all right. Implement details. As always, cards that are in blue are having the number of copies that are allowed reduced, and then cards that are in white are having the number of copies increase. So, um, we already see a couple of forbidden cards here, but I want to read the list in full, and then we'll go ahead and, like, you know, break it down item by item. So, cards to be forbidden. So, these cards are going to be at zero. Kaiser Coliseum and Catapult Turtle. Okay? All right. Cards to be limited. Summon limit. All right. Cards to be semi-limited. Bonfire. What... Divine Arsenal, Ah Zeus, Sky Thunder. Wow, I did not see that one before. That's why. Okay, so Zeus is going to two. Bonfire is going to two. Okay, uh, other cards be semi-limited. Rescue Ace Airlifter. Okay, and then Per Lily. Cards to which the limit on the number of copies will be lifted. Magic Spectre Unicorn, Cashier of Birth, Yadagrasu, Teller Knight Ptolemies. And that is it. That is the entirety of the list. Okay, so I was going to say, can we get it all on screen at once here? Here we go. Um, okay, so let me start. Okay, well, uh, so the, the stuff that I saw before was cards to be limited, summon limit. That was the only blurb that I saw before. So I was like, okay, the only thing getting limited is summon limit. I was like, that's kind of interesting. <sighs> Okay, so here's what I think as a whole, right off the top of my head. I really don't feel like this is the most impactful list. <laughs> I'm a little surprised that this is the list following the Duelist Cup, because I feel like usually Duelist Cup ban lists are bigger slash more impactful ones um, that really take into account the metagame of the Duelist Cup, which we're actually going to talk about... Um, I don't know exactly when that video is going out to see. It might even go out tomorrow, but I do want to do another video analyzing the top 100 decks of the Duelist Cup as well. That'll be in the very near future, if not tomorrow, uh, within the next couple of days for sure. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you look at those results, I mean, of, of course there is a, uh, a lot of Snake Eye Fire King. Not a lot of Pure Snake Eye, but Snake Eye Fire King specifically. And the only hit I really see to that here is Bonfire to 2 which I don't think is going to be nearly impactful enough. Um, I guess one thing that is not here that I really wanted to see, um, which is probably not going to be a surprise to a lot of people, I've been talking about this a lot on like Discord and Twitter lately, I really wanted to see a Promethean Princess ban. I really think that would have been the best way to curb a fire format. Um, it might sound a little harsh, right? Um, I've seen some people say, like, oh, well, the fire attribute as a whole isn't a problem. Snake Eye is. But I kind of disagree. Like, as long as Promethean Princess exists, I really do think fire as an attribute is a little bit of a problem. Just because Promethean Princess is so overtuned. Like, I don't know. I, I, I see people defending Princess as like, oh, it's fine. She's not that overtuned. But, like... I think of her compared to, like, Chaos Ruler, because that's another thing that I've heard people say is, like, oh, it's fine for Fire to have a broken monster. It can be as good as Light or Dark, but it's, like, 
Yeah, but when you compare Promethean Princess to Chaos Ruler, I feel like Promethean Princess is, like, clearly the stronger card. Like, they both revive themselves, but I think the main thing that Princess does is not only act- well, main things, acts as disruption, is a completely generic link, um, and can also revive another body from the graveyard, whereas Chaos Ruler has the revive, you know, by banishing a light and dark, and, like, the Excavate, but as somebody who played a lot of Chaos Ruler, I can tell you, the Excavate was nice bonus advantage every now and then, but not something you ever relied on for your combo lines that involved it, so, um, but I think really, and again, we'll go into this more when we actually talk about the Duelist Cup Top 100 decks, but the fact that, the fact that, uh, Pure Snake Eye saw almost zero play compared to Fire King Snake Eye, like, I think there's seriously two Pure Snake Eye lists in the Duelist Cup Top 100. There's, like, as much Math Mech on there, uh, as, like, you know, other, uh, you know, or other Tier 2 decks, so, I think, I don't know, in my opinion, this shows us, the lack of pure Snake Eye, shows us that Ash and Wanted to One were effective at curbing Snake Eye as a deck. Now, obviously, Snake Eye is still very prevalent alongside Fire King. Um, so, if we're seeing Snake Eye still see play, but as an engine and not a deck, uh, I think that it's safe to say that, you know, it's something outside of Snake Eye that's the larger issue. And I don't think it's any of the Fire King cards. I don't think the Fire King cards are inherently overpowered. I really do think it's Promethean Princess. The other thing, too, another point that I'll say against people saying, like, oh, but then you kill a lot of other decks. It's like, if you think about Fire decks, Promethean Princess is the one that Snake Eye... Or rather, Snake Eye is the one that's most reliant on Promethean Princess. Salamangri has really easy combo lines to figure out that don't involve Princess. In for Noble Knight, I honestly feel the same way. Um, because Princess is used so late into that combo line, you can do pretty much everything you need to do in that deck without Princess. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, Rescue Ace, yeah. Rescue Ace definitely does not need Promethean Princess to be able to do its plays either. But if you think about Snake Eye, what does Snake Eye do without Promethean Princess? Like, it's really actually kind of hard to figure out what kind of substantial end board you'll end on uh, without the extension on your turn and disruption on the opponent's turn of the Promethean Princess. Uh, I maintain that that card getting banned is the best way to fix fire format. But anyway, um, let's talk about the actual list that we have in front of us. I'm going to start with a, a sip of water, actually. And then we'll look at the cards to be forbidden. Kaiser Coliseum and Catapult Turtle. Um, I'm totally fine with both of these bands. I'm completely in favor of them. Um, I don't think hitting Floodgates is pretty much ever a bad idea. Um, I, I'm not in favor of banning every single Floodgate. I think that's a bit much. And as I've mentioned before as well, I do think Stun does have its role in the meta and does contribute to diverse deck building um, slash an overall diverse metagame as a result. However, <laughs> I do think that the number of Floodgates is definitely still uh, able to be trimmed back, and we're seeing that in multiple ways on this list, which I do think is good. Uh, Kaiser Column to Zero, uh, Kaiser Coliseum rather, and I can just talk about some limit here. I think some limit to one is fine as well. Um, yeah, both these cards getting hit, I think, are very good choices. Um, and it will be nice to not have to worry about them. You know, to be fair, I didn't really run into that many Kaiser Coliseums. Um, I think I ran into some of them a little more often, but either way, uh, you know, it's, it's still nice to see these floodgates get greatly reduced in the number of copies. Uh, I know some of them it's going from three to one. I think Kaiser Coliseum, was it at one before? Uh, either way, zero is a, a perfectly good number for it. <laughs> I'm completely fine with that. Uh, Catapult Turtle, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm also totally fine with this. So... Uh, when it comes to hitting FTKs, I think that hits like this are very good. Um, this is, I think the Catapult Turtle ban in particular, both in Master Duel and in OCG, is to curb. I know there's like a Tachyon uh, FTK that is very consistent uh, that uses Catapult Turtle. So, um, yeah. I, I, and again, I think if you're going to hit FTKs, the best way to do it is to hit the card that has literally zero relevance at all besides being used for an FTK. Um, like, really, what what does Catapult Turtle do? Um, and what has it done that's been meta-relevant? I was gonna say recently, but pretty much ever, besides FTKing, and the answer is nothing. It's only used for FTKing, so um, I think it's definitely fine to get rid of it. It's similar to the argument I've made before of, like, 
when people say ban the soul day she helps an ftk i'm like why not just ban you know exodia the card that causes the ftk uh because he's soul day helps uh infernal light warrior pile decks and other rogue strategies and i don't think it's fair to take a very crucial tool for those not even tiered decks uh just to curb one version of an exodia ftk because let's be real we all know that another exodia ftk will come along uh without he sold at some point it's just inevitable um but that's kind of my two cents on ftks and how to curb them i am very much in favor of hitting i mean again it's like you know do you hit the one problem card or the all the stuff that might potentially enable it uh it's kind of like the Halkin tuner problem in my opinion well quote unquote problem uh where it's not much of a problem i think it's easy you just ban Halk and keep the tuners right uh you just ban capital turtle and keep the tachyon cards you just ban exodia and keep the soul day and uh, other warriors support but anyway that's all just again my my two cents i know exodia won't get banned it's too iconic but uh, we already talked about summon limits, so let's talk about these semi-limits. Bonfire to two. Um, now, I know I have argued greatly that Ash and, and Wanted to one were not just consistency hits, they were ceiling hits, uh, which is very true, and that's why pure Snake Eye sees like almost no play anymore, right? Or rather, that, that's a bit of a hyperbole. That's why it's like greatly fallen to, like in my opinion, probably mid-tier two, uh, is that it no longer has that guaranteed follow-up, and as a result, doesn't really have that much substantial follow-up uh, as a result, right? Like, um, with Ash at one, you can't snake eye ash search snake eye ash so you are greatly reduced in your ability to have that infinite follow-up even if you have original sin right like you can put back the snake eye ash in your graveyard the one snake eye ash you have but you can't also search it with the same original sin effect right and good luck recycling your original sin back with only one wanted um yeah so the 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 infinite comeback plays which is to me seems to be the most complained part and also in my opinion i agree the most ridiculous part of snake guy is definitely curbed by ash and wanted one that's why we are seeing so much fire king snake guy as opposed to regular snake guy is that snake guy needs fire king to be able to have any amount of follow-up like whatsoever right so um my only point here is that bonfire on the other hand this is just a pure consistency hit this is just now you see bonfire a little bit less often um which is fine like i i, I here's the thing right when people talk about consistency hits not being effective it really it feels to me a lot of the time like everyone's just reading from the same script like Oh, can, like, consistency hits are bad, because if they top deck the one card anyway, then they do the combo anyway, and that feels bad. I don't really subscribe to that personally, because I think that completely ignores, like, pretty blatantly the fact that that is going to be happening much less often. Um, it just seems to be, like, a very human reaction. Anyway, but I will say that, like, consistency hits by themselves, yes, are not at impactful, as impactful as ceiling hits. I won't argue against that. Um, and Bonfire here, again, is purely a consistency hit, but that on top of the consistency and ceiling hits of Ash and Wanted going to one makes it a little more impactful. That said, I'm actually still not really a fan of this semi-limit. I don't really think Bonfire is the issue. Again, in my opinion, if we just ban Promethean Princess, then I think that this deck and the Fire decks as a whole in the format will be fine. Um, so, eh, I'm not really the biggest fan of this uh, semi-limit, but I guess it's not like the worst decision in the world. At the very least, you will see uh, Stegai Ash just in Poplar and other stuff just a little bit less often. Zeus going to two. This is probably for me the biggest surprise on the ban list. Zeus to two. Um, Zodiac really likes that. <laughs> Zodiac, who a lot of their game plan is just using Zeus, I really, really likes this. That's my first thought. Um, there are other Xyz decks, of course, that really like it as well. Um, I know that in the TCG, Zeus is at three, which has always been kind of wild to me. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, the more you really think about it, like, is it really that egregious? Like, I think about games where I've summoned Zeus, and how many times have I been like, oh, I wish I had another one? Um, Zodiac, again, is really the only deck off the top of my head I can think of where I've had that thought before. Um, maybe Pearly once or twice, but um 
I, I don't think that outside of like super dedicated Xyz decks like Pearly, like Zodiac, you're probably going to even really consider the second copy of Zeus. But I actually, the more I think about it, the more I kind of like this because I really do think it does open up an opportunity for those heavy Xyz focused decks to have a little bit more oomph, right? To pack a little more punch uh, in their extra deck with that second copy of Zeus. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a good change. I like it. Um, I'm pretty in favor of this. Rescue Ace Airlifter to two. Um, yeah, I mean, this is another just pretty blatant consistency hit. I don't know. I think that... I'm a little conflicted on this. I'm a little conflicted on Rescue Ace in general and how... I'll, or even if it should be addressed. Because here's the thing. Rescue Ace is, is one of those decks where, like... It kind of feels like Sword Soul did for a long time, where, like, yeah, it is, like, a top-tier deck. Um, tier 1, obviously, in this current meta. But it doesn't feel like it's strong enough to really warrant heavy hits. So, like, Airlift Order 2 kind of makes sense in that regard of, like... Airlift, or, uh, Rescue Ace is good, but not, like, oppressive, right? Um... I kind of don't think Fire King Snake Eye is very oppressive either, but I know some people disagree with that, but... Um, so, like, how do I feel about Airlifter to 2? I think it's really awkward as the only Rescue Ace hit, but then I'm also thinking, like, what other Rescue Ace hit would you do, right? Like, hmm... I don't know, I guess if I really, really wanted to curb Rescue Ace, I'd probably limit Emergency? Like, that'd probably be the best way to hit Rescue Ace, in the least impactful but still noticeable way if you wanted to do that but do they even deserve emergency going to one or something like that i don't know um i mean i understand airlifter too i actually don't think it's a horrible decision like so this is actually one of the cases where i am a little in favor of a consistency hit um because again i don't think that rescue ace needs to be hit super badly but I don't think it should be completely ignored either. Even though this doesn't really change a lot, I really do think this is probably the most you could do to Rescue Ace right now. Uh, because I don't think it really deserves to lose much more than like a single copy of Airlifter. Same with Pearly and Pearl Lily. Um, we did see that Pearly was pretty uh, prevalent on uh, the last Duelist Cup. Again, we'll look at that top 100 um, in the very near future here. And I think combined, I don't know, because like, what are the other hits to Pearly right now? Pearly is at two as well as Pearly now, and um, Delicious Memory is at one. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's another one of those. I feel like it's in. I feel like the same way I feel about Rescue Ace, right? With Pearly. Now this is with a stipulation that Delicious Memory is at one. If Delicious is at three, then yeah, I think Pearly would probably be a little bit strong. But with Delicious Memory already at one, does Pearly actually even need any other hits? I don't know, because, like, I don't think the Pearly needs to be at 2 still. Pearly is a little bit different. Pearly is, like, you know, obviously the um, the better of the cats if you're going to go for only one of them. And I do think that, I think that Pearly to 2 is a little bit more impactful than, like, Airlifter to 2. Because Pearlies often play enough of a long game that it, it could potentially come up not having the third Pearly. Uh, more, a lot more often, I think, than the, the third Airlifter would ever come up, so... I don't know. Um, I'm a little bit iffy about this one. Kind of the same as Airlifter. Airlifter to two was a little more in favor of per Lily to two. I'm a little bit, I think, a little lot less in favor of. Hmm. I don't know. It's interesting. But I, I don't think it's, like, the most awful hit in the world. Again, I guess the question to ask is, much like Rescue Ace, do I think Pearly needs a substantial hit? Aside from Delicious Memory being at 1, no. If I did, what would I do? Probably limit Sleepy Memory? But is that too much? Yes. So, I don't know. This is probably another hit that probably could have just gone without happening, but I don't think it's awful that it did. 
And let's wrap up with all these cards that are now going to three. Magic Spectre Unicorn Kieran. Yeah, it could have happened forever ago. Cashier of Birth. Yeah, it could have happened forever ago. Yadagrasu. Yep, that could have happened forever ago. And Teller Knight Ptolemies. Yep, that card could have been at three forever ago. This is actually the same Teller Knight card that just got unbanned relatively recently. It's wild to think that this card was at zero because the most broken, the reason it got banned, like one of the most broken things it could do for a long time, uh, at least to my knowledge, I wasn't actually playing during this time, but uh, was that it could rank up, it, it could turn three level fours into Cyber Dragon Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, if you have three level 4 monsters on the field, you can probably do a lot better in just about any deck than ending on one single Omni Negate. Like, there are there are better things you could do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think again, overall, this ban list is like, the hits that are on here are like, fine? I think that's my overall <laughs> feeling about this ban list, is it has a very, very hesitant, like, it's fine, I guess, but um, I think we are missing a lot of the oomph on this list. And I think for me, in my opinion, uh, that comes with banning Promethean Princess, I think is the, the best way to address the format. Um, oh, the other reason I think it's good that I didn't talk about earlier is that then you don't end up hitting like a million different archetypes, right? Unnecessarily, because I, I, again... I would rather just ban Promethean Princess than like, okay, uh, now let's start hitting some Fire King cards, or maybe we need to hit some more Rescue Ace cards, or, uh, you know, it's like, instead of bouncing, and not even in the current meta, but also in the future, right, if you keep Promethean Princess around, you're gonna have to do the same song and dance with any, any Fire deck that's even halfway decent, so... But anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you as always. Let us go ahead and move now to our outro. Hey everybody, Hexlex here. Just want to give you a huge thanks for watching all the way to the very end of the video. Uh, believe it or not, that is actually one of the best ways that you can support the channel, is by watching the videos in their entirety. But there are many ways in which you can support the channel if you are so interested. Uh, the names that you're seeing on screen here, I gotta give an extra special thanks to, because these are people who have chosen to either become a member on YouTube, which if you're interested in, you can do as well via the join button next to the subscribe button down there uh, or have signed up over on patreon and become members there link to that is going to be in the description below uh, without the support that is being offered by again all the people that you're seeing on screen right here um, I would not be able to take the time to dedicate to uploading daily YouTube videos so thank you thank you so very much but uh, there are also other ways you can support as well um, again link to the description below if you like my deck tracker that you'll see in a lot of my videos the untapped companion you can download that for free and if you use my affiliate link down there uh, then that also goes a long way towards supporting the channel uh, that's again free so is subscribing here on YouTube that's also free and a huge way to support uh, you can also uh, check out twitch once again linked in the description below following and subscribing over there will not only support as well but also give you notifications of when I go live if you want to catch some of the live streams um, but really no matter how you choose to support uh, it all adds up and it all definitely means the world so thank you each and every one of you uh, for now this is Hexlex I'm gonna be signing out but more than that, I'm hoping that you have a fantastic day.